uh, this is my latest repair project. This is a disc light with eight of these mirrors that are connected to stepper motors. And then we have like lenses and lights and stuff. Um, this thing is just a quick fix. All of these motors have a small screw there at the back. I uh, don't know if you can really see it, but you can see it on that one maybe. And that's a thing that the system uses to index where the motor is in space relative. Uh, in re sorry, in relative space. This one does not have a screw, which means uh, every time it boots, it just the mirror hits the top. While in these, it's not physically possible because of that screw. And this, for some reason, this motor is making a lot of noise. So I'll just have a look at that. In the meantime, we can tear it down completely just to see how it works on the inside, just for fun. On the back, it has its two DMX inputs, a mic with a sensitivity control, the dip switches for the DMX channel, and then just a normal kettle plug power connector. On the top, it has a safety bolt and a mounting mechanism. Just a single hole, nothing fancy. Uh, knobs at the side to fasten it. Okay, so the inside is actually quite simple. It's just a fan, control board, power supply, power connector, the two DMX, the two XLR connectors used for DMX, and the dip socket connector and just eight of these modules that those are the LEDs actually quite interesting just daily chain like that all of them identical to bring costs down so on the main ch uh, on the main board let's start with this side this is a SN75176 BP that's a RS484 sorry RS485 driver this handles the DMX just a standard chip from Texas Instruments. Then this chip is a LM358P op amp. That's to probably for the mic. This chip is a Toshiba ULN2803. I think that's an eight or seven channel Darlington array. It's basically like a, a bunch of transistors into a packed into an IC package. Then this chip is a CM4 HC595, yeah, 595, the same as this one, this one, and yeah, and this chip down here. All these chips are the ULN 2803 chips, these are probably to drive the stepper motors. And the main, I'm the only chip I'm not familiar with is this uh, big one. It's a Mega Win MPC 89E 54AE chip. Fortunately, I'm not familiar with that chip, but that's probably just some sort of microcontroller. Some filter caps and a regulator just for power. And yeah, not much. Actually, not much. Uh, the same for HC. Sorry, the seventy-four HC five nine five chips are eight eight output uh, shift registers. They use three pins: a serial, a data pin, a clock pin, and a latching pin. Very easy to use with something like an Arduino. Also, this uh, ULN twenty eight three chip very useful to use with something like an Arduino. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they. A control the motors. Um, also, I think these motors are they have one common since they have five pins each motor. I think the motors work have four inductors, and I think that's how they sorry, two inductors. Yeah, uh, yeah, four inductors. I think that's how they drive it. Unfortunately, not quite sure. I'll post this schematic on the screen, but yeah, at the end, this is actually quite a very simple circuit. Yeah, so this is one of the modules, but one of the LED modules that uh, machine uses. Both of these chips are 
Also SEM4 HC595 chips. Not from the same manufacturer though. This one I'm not familiar with that logo. And this one is NXP. In total this thing has 15? Uh, 15 LEDs, yeah. Eight, uh, 18 in the outer ring and 6 in the inner ring and 1 in the center. So 15 LEDs. And yeah, data in, data out. Nothing special. Is the underside. It's, it looks a little bit corroded, but luckily that's not my problem. Um, yeah, it only has one cap fitted though, and I see it has space for four. Uh, something I notice that it doesn't have is a uh, current limiting for the LEDs. They probably decided that it's not needed. Uh, I don't see any white LEDs though. Maybe I'm just mistaken, but uh, normally you can tell whether these are white LEDs by the yellowish uh, phosphor on the inside. But these all look to be normal red, blue and green LEDs. Other than that, nothing special. I think this uh, yeah, this must be quite a simple board and cheap board to manufacture because it's these chips are extremely cheap, so are the LEDs and the connectors. So yeah, nothing special. If you look closely, you can see here it says out. I don't know, maybe you have to watch an HD and zoom in, but here it says out and I can see an N at this side. Maybe not picking up on the camera very well, but I see an N and that's probably for N. And that's all there is to it. Nothing special. So I thought I'd just show you what these uh, LEDs look like when they uh, are actually on. Just power it on. Yeah, it's not working because I did not fit the actual connector. Okay, so the center LED is red. So to explain exactly what's wrong with this unit, as you can see this one's not indexing properly and this one's making a lot of noise when it's moving. Okay, so when all of them are working, yeah, this one's making a lot of noise and this one's really not indexed properly. So this is the unit that's not index indexing properly. I thought I'd just show you exactly how these things work. It is a mirror, uh, this shape, basically connected to a bracket. And that's connected to a hub. Uh, this, you can see there's a small silver hub and that, that's connected to the shaft of the motor. Now the entire motor is connected to this bracket and it's actually a very small motor. I think it's a 40 by 40 by about 30 millimeters and yeah 
It's actually a very small unit. Now, I'm going to take the other unit to show how this thing uh, indexes. When the machine boots, these units don't have uh, end stops or soft end stops where it actually knows exactly where the motor is. Like on 3D printers, you'd have uh, optical end stops or switches when it knows where the motor is in space. With these units, they chose a much simpler and cheaper solution. They actually just put a screw in here and they made slots inside the inside the bracket so that it only has a limited movement. Now when the machine boots it forces the motor to move the entire assembly all the way to one side and does that a few times so that it knows that if a motor is working that this mirror is at this position and then it can move the motor relative to that position. Now the problem with this unit is or with the one motor is that it does not have this screw. This is literally just a screw with some uh, heat shrink tubing on it. I'll show you here. As you can see, the screw needs to go in there and it has, because it's not there, this mirror has a movement of, well, let's say the end stop is a physical mirror until it hits the bracket on both sides. Now that's not a good thing because the mirror can get damaged and then it, it, it's like when one bulb is dead in a row of eight bulbs. It just looks bad. So just going to put in a new screw and I'm trying to figure out what this is the, the motor that's making a lot of noise. I just can't figure out why this thing is making so much noise. It should not. But then again, these motors aren't that expensive to replace. Okay, so from my box of screws, I'm going to take, see if this one fits. Yes, this screw fits. Maybe a bit long, but, uh, oh, sorry, a bit short, but, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so just have a bit of heat shrink tubing. Uh, put it over the screw. And just take a lighter. You can use a soldering iron as well. I've just find that lighters work best. And then we have a rubber coating around the screw. Probably cut off the top. What probably happened is uh, because of the vibration, the screw just came loose. So I'm just going to add some glue to it so that, that doesn't happen in future. So I'm just going to use some glue. Actually, you know what? I'm going to unscrew it. Insert the glue into the screw hole and a little bit onto the screw itself and then just screw it in. Okay, so when I plug it in, you should be able to see exactly how it, uh, how the indexing mechanism works. This is the unit that made so much noise. Let's connect it and see why it's making so much noise. I can't see anything physically wrong with it. Okay. 
So I think maybe it wasn't screwed in properly. That's probably why it's making so much noise. Uh, I'll just screw it in now and hopefully it will work better. So on this unit, the one that's making so much noise, I um, actually figured out exactly why it's making so much noise. If you look closely, I'll try my best to film this. When I hold the bracket tightly and I move the motor a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that screw. And hopefully you can hear the noise that it's making. So that's exactly what's making so much noise. So I just need to tighten the screw and hopefully it will work then. Okay, so I don't think this was captured in the previous video. Um, I just remove a screwed screw and one of the screws actually sheared off completely. I don't know if you can see that there. I think that's one of the reasons why this thing is making so much noise because the motor isn't screwed in properly to the bracket. So now I'm just going to remove the bracket completely and see if I can just get that to remove that piece there. So one thing I've noticed is that uh, maybe you can see it, maybe not. This thing will focus. The screw is actually quite shallow. So I think all the, the screw holding the motor together is quite shallow. So I think maybe the screw that's holding it is too long. So I just added a small washer. See, see if that fixes the problem if I screw it in. Because it doesn't want to go any deeper. I can't turn it more. So I think this screw is hitting the bottom of the uh, the silver screw from the motor. Okay, let's try this again. Hopefully the screw doesn't fall out this time. Yeah, if I twist it now, it doesn't move or make a sound. So I think that fixed the problem. Let's see if I can tighten it anymore. Okay, hopefully that fixed the problem. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that the power supply is actually a 12 volt power supply and I didn't actually see this uh, metal block. These are 75, oh sorry, LM75. Ah, these are 7805 5 volt regulators. Uh, both of them. Yeah. Both of these are 75, oh, sorry, 7805 uh, voltage regulators. Just connected to this piece of heatsink, connected to the bottom of a unit. Okay, so now I'm gonna plug it in for the first time. As you can see, all the mirrors are lined up, including this one. And hopefully it won't make so much noise. And hopefully it'll work. Okay, it's still making a lot of noise, but not as much as it used to. Okay, so after a bit of tinkering, I was able to figure out how this thing works. Um, it has, it, it uses 16 DMX channels, uh, two per unit, if I can call it that, one for the motor's position and one for the light. Um, let me give an example. I'm going to put the first two motors, the first four at some value and then The first eight channels are the colors and the second eight channels are the motor positions. Okay. 
So I thought I'd just uh, show you what the actual projections of the LEDs look like with the DMX channel. Uh, from the bottom it's off. Um, at 21, uh, at 10% only one LED comes on. Red, green, blue, then all the red, all the green, all the blue. And all of them are on, which makes white. Then only the outer ring LEDs. Then I don't know what they call this, but this is the next channel or the next uh, preset. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to watch more videos like this please subscribe.